It's turkey day here at Moss Mountain Farm. Well, sort of. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to Garden Style, a new show all about ways to grow, cook, and design your world in some fun ways. Now today's show is all about Thanksgiving, having guests over and actually having time to enjoy them. What a concept. In today's show, we're gonna show you how to grow some of your own decorations for fall. Then we head into the kitchen for some side dishes that are not only delicious, but also great time savers. And later, a festive table setting using some warm colors and long lasting items from the garden. So be sure to stick around. We'll get started right after the break. One of my favorite ways for decorating in the fall is with gourds. I mean, after all, they're so easy. They last a long time and they're really colorful. They fit with just about any autumn theme. I use them when styling tables, mantles, and certainly centerpieces for dining tables. So what about growing some of your own autumn decorations? By growing some of your own gourds. It's as easy as picking up a seed pack of a mixed assortment of gourds like these. What you wanna do is you wanna plant gourds in the spring once the soil is warm. You wanna plant them about a half inch deep and about four to five feet apart. And you wanna give them something to grow on because watch out, the vines really grow and they require a lot of space but they produce a lot of gourds. You can't believe how many they can produce and what a fun plant for children to grow. In no time at all, you'll have a lot of options for decorating your home in the fall in a natural way. Now we're gonna do a tablescape a little later in the show, so stay tuned.
By preparing side dishes that you can make the day before, you can maximize the time with your guests. Now, this butternut squash gratin is a prime example of this. This is made by a friend of mine whose name is Cappy. She has a restaurant and it couldn't be easier, but I'm gonna let her show you how to make it. Today we're making a butternut squash gratin. It's a perfect addition to your Thanksgiving meal. It's really easy. You can even make it the day before and bake it right before you sit down to enjoy the turkey. Got some yellow onions that we're caramelizing and a little bit of butter. After they turn uh, golden, we're going to add the butternut squash. Then season with a bit of salt and pepper and a little bit of sugar. That will help bring out the natural sweetness of the squash and stir again for four or five minutes or until it just becomes a bit tender. If you want to speed up this process, you could cover it and let it brown quickly. So here's what the butternut squash looks like before we get into it. This is actually an heirloom variety. It's called Tahitian melon. And you simply uh, peel this off with a sharp knife or a paring knife. You can also roast it first and that makes it really easy to uh, get the peel off. And it doesn't matter that you've cooked it, you'll just reduce the cooking time once you've got it in the oven. I'm gonna add a little more butter because everything's better with a little butter. Once that has uh, cooked down a bit, we're gonna add a little bit of vegetable stock or chicken stock. I prefer the flavor of the chicken stock, but if you've got a vegetarian in the group, go ahead and just use some vegetable stock. We'll take your serving dish, butter it. A, a nine by 13 or about a two quart casserole will be perfect for uh, this quantity. This should feed 10 to 12 people. And we're going to cover it with aluminum foil and pop it in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes or until you can pierce the squash with the tines of a fork. and we're going to make a wonderful white cheddar, breadcrumb, and herb mix that will make the gratin really, really special. It's white breadcrumbs and white cheddar cheese, a little bit of rosemary, fresh rosemary, and thyme. Equal parts of white cheddar cheese. You could use uh, yellow cheddar cheese, Monterey Jack, Swiss, whatever you like. Then the herbs, this is what's gonna really make it. I've got lots of fresh rosemary. Mmm, smells so good and dry thyme, mix that together. And that's gonna cook for about 30 minutes. After it's tender, we'll remove the foil and sprinkle the cheese breadcrumbs, pop it in the oven for another 15 minutes and it's ready to serve. After it's baked for 30 minutes, take it out, remove the foil. Breadcrumbs with the herbs and cheese, sprinkle it on the top. Return it to the oven, uncovered, and bake for 15 minutes. It's absolutely delicious. Now another side dish that you can prepare a day ahead is this wonderful dish of Brussels sprouts. Just look at these, they're so yummy. Now what you'll wanna do is to boil two pounds of fresh Brussels sprouts for only about 10 minutes until they're tender. Reserve about two tablespoons of that liquid because we're gonna make a really subtle sauce. Then drain the cooked Brussels sprouts in a small saucepan, melt three tablespoons of butter, then stir in two tablespoons of white vinegar and one tablespoon of fresh tarragon and a half a teaspoon of salt and that reserve liquid. Then pour this mixture over the Brussels sprouts and make sure that they're all thoroughly coated. And to reheat these, all you have to do is put them in a baking dish. You can put a, a foil tent over them or you can use an oven safe uh, baking dish with a lid on it. You just wanna put them in an oven that's 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. Uh, they warm up beautifully. You can see the steam rising off these. And then just to finish them off, take a small jar of pimento peppers and uh, just dice them and sprinkle them all over the top like this. Adds a nice touch of flavor and beautiful color. Just look at that. Give it a try, you'll be glad you did.
I don't know about you, but when you're having guests over, particularly during the holidays, it's always important to try to plan ahead. Well, and there are always things that I tend to leave out, and one of those things is having something for my guests as soon as they arrive. Sometimes they always seem to arrive a little early. So having a drink for them, something that's easy, refreshing, and non-alcoholic seems to fit the bill. And this one is so simple, you won't believe it. All you need to do is take a pitcher uh, with about five scoops of ice. Then all you're gonna do is take a cup of blueberry pomegranate juice that you can pick up at the grocery store, pour it in to one liter of sparkling water. And that's really basically the recipe. So you can have all these ingredients on hand. You can set out your glasses. What I like to do is add just a little citrus to this in the way of a garnish. Pour that in. Mix this together. And then you can pour up the drinks like this. Mmm, really good. Not too sweet. The perfect drink to kick off a holiday celebration. We'll return right after this short break. Now I know this idea is quite a departure from the traditional Turkey Day Fair, but I'm suggesting in the spirit of saving time, maybe think about a Cornish game hen instead of one large turkey. Think about it. Thawing the bird, well, takes time. These little Cornish game hens 
are easy. You can cook one of these per guest and they're beautiful on the plate. What I'm doing here to prepare them is I'm just cutting a little slit in this flap back here on the back side of the bird. Cut off a little extra fat here like that. You just want to make a little cut just into the skin there. And then you take this leg and you bring it over to this side. And then you take the other leg and you cross it over like this. It's like buttoning a shirt. Now with its legs crossed, you can see, uh, all I do is take the wings and pull them up under the bird like that. So the wings and the legs that stick up are held closer to the body of the bird, which allows it to cook more evenly. So look at them, aren't they beautiful? Now you could do all of this the day before and get the birds ready just by placing them once you're finished back in the fridge and then pop them in the oven whenever you're ready. Or you could do it the day of and as we're going to do here, prepare these to go ahead and pop them into the oven. Now what makes these little Cornish game hens so irresistibly delicious is this citrus glaze that I'm going to make now. It's really quite simple and what you want to do is you want to start with two oranges and you want the juice of those two oranges and the juice of two limes. And you also want to make use of the zest of those two oranges. And here you go, as well as the zest of the two limes. You can see it's going to be really packed with citrus. The next thing you're going to do is add honey. What I have here is a half a cup of honey. Can't go wrong with honey. And then a teaspoon of salt. Now you just want to make sure that all these ingredients conspire with one another and when they do they're going to come up with a great glaze that you'll apply to these birds over the course of them roasting. Now you can see it's all into solution now and uh, the last ingredient is some fresh cracked black pepper which I love so the more the better. In fact I'll even add some extra before I throw these birds into the oven. So anyway I'm going to whisk all that together and ready to move on to the birds. So you can see how easy this is. Now what I'm going to do is just take some olive oil and I'm going to rub down each one of these Cornish game hens under the wings, over the top, the undersides like this. Helps hold the moisture in. Olive oil has some of its own flavor. And then I've taken some fresh herbs from the garden, a little bit of thyme, some rosemary, a few sage leaves and just take these and shove them into the cavity of the bird. Just adds a little extra flavor like that. Can't beat fresh herbs from the garden. Okay, there we go. Now these, once they all have the herbs in them, um, I'll rub them with a little salt. Now when these birds go in the oven, they go into a 375 degree preheated oven. Going to cook them for about an hour and 15 to hour and 20 minutes. And at the halfway mark of them cooking, you'll begin to apply the glaze. You see, because there's honey in the glaze, you don't want to apply it too early because it can actually burn. So we just want a nice golden color on these birds once we bring them out of the oven. Now you're going to love the flavor of these birds. The citrus glaze just gives them sort of a really light and fresh flavor. Okay, now what I did earlier is I actually started this process in order to show you the finished result. So why don't I take the roasting pan out and show you what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, look at these. And there you go. And that's what they look like once they've been glazed. You bring them out of the oven. Aren't they beautiful? You can see the herbs here in them and they smell divine. You can see how beautiful these will be on the plates. For dessert, I find that guests are delighted by the idea of these individual little apple pies made from a single pie apple. These are a favorite. This is a Granny Smith. Not a favorite because Granny Smith was my grandmother, but Granny Smiths are a tart apple and great for baking. I'll serve these with some whipped cream, with some cinnamon on top. And what's wonderful about this is you can actually create these little pies ahead of time, pop them in the oven, and make the house smell so wonderful with this aroma. Start by preheating the oven to 375 degrees. Then take six Granny Smith apples, cut off the tops, and remove the inside of each apple with a spoon or melon baller very carefully. 
be sure not to puncture the peel. After removing the insides, just set the hollowed apples aside. Now the next thing you want to do is remove the skin from two additional apples and slice them very thinly. These pieces will be your filling. Okay, next mix the sliced apples with one third cup of sugar, one and a half tablespoon of brown sugar, and one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, and a dash of salt in a bowl. Then scoop the filling into the hollow apples. Next, you want to roll out a pie crust and cut it into quarter inch strips and cover the top of the apple in a lattice pattern. Place the apples in an 8x8 pan, then brush a small amount of melted butter over the pie crust and sprinkle it with a little cinnamon and sugar, and add just enough water to cover the bottom of the pan. Now you're going to cook these apples with foil, covering them for about 20 to 25 minutes. Then remove the foil and bake for an additional 20 minutes or until the crust is golden brown and the sliced apple filling is soft. One last tip, you know these can be made the day before, completely cooked and then warmed in the oven. This is the key, these are best served warm. And don't forget that whipped cream. Mm. A fantastic table awaits you just after the break. You know, there's nothing like a festive table setting to get everybody in the holiday spirit. Just look at this table setting that I've put together. Now keep in mind, this could be done the day or even two days ahead of time. The flowers are fresh, but everything I've used is a long lasting flower. The gourds, we know those last a long time. Oh, I wanna point out one thing. This time of year gives me an opportunity to use some of my really bright and colorful tableware. Just look at these plates.
They're fiery hot red. They work beautifully with these napkins. And the contrast between them and these textured placemats makes them even pop more. And I've picked up these bright, intense colors in the flowers and added some pomegranates to sort of carry out that theme among the gourds. So you get these color echoes going. Now all I have to do is light the candles here on the table and up on the mantel, and I'm ready for my guests. Well, I'm thankful you joined us today, and I hope that you've picked up some inspiring ways to grow, cook, and design your next holiday. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith for Garden Style. 